Tell me about um, it. It's just pop culture. It's just a little bit of everything. I'm trying to include a little bit of everything, not just music, but a little bit of politics too. We've got Patty Hearst inside. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Okay, uh, my name is Howard Francis Connell. I was born on September 15th, 1960 in Arlington, Virginia. And I went up here in New Orleans, been here for many years. And I moved into this neighborhood about three years ago and it was kind of uh, still ghetto back then. It was all empty lots and chimneys and there was transvestite prostitutes selling crack cocaine on the corner. But eventually it's all cleaned up and when they were building these two houses here, they purchased hot tubs at Home Depot. And I got all excited <laughs> and I was like, please, can I please have those boxes? So I made 12 panels and then I took all the memorabilia that I managed to save over the years. It was stored in um, boxes from uh, Omaha Steaks, these waterproof foam boxes. So I just started putting it all together and this is what I came up with. It's called Pop Culture 16. Number one, we'll start out with uh, the infamous LaBelle ladies, Patti LaBelle. This is a woman named Valerie Carter, very unknown singer in the 70s. This is RCA Records 81. This is their roster. It was quite amazing, quite a crew. Lou Reed, Tears for Fears, Martha and the Muffins, they were my favorites. It's my old friend Michelle Malone. It's an old picture of Patti Smith and Joni Mitchell. Number two. Number two. Uh, I was actually there when this was taken. I was about 20 feet away. It was on the stage at uh, Live Aid. We were hooting and holler at them. They were in this little tent in the back. It was awesome. Mick and Tina. Paul and Linda. This little torn up Jackson Brown. Ricky Lee Jones. Mr. Plant. This is an old, old Bob Marley from the, what is it, 1970. Six. These are the original Pointer Sisters. Linda Ronset. Linda Ronset. I'm very, very fond of her. I always have been. Whoa. Number three. This is mostly 45 covers. Landon Lovitch. Pylon was an old band from Georgia in the 80s. Now Explosion. They were awesome. Bow Wow Wow. That's my friend Esther Williamson. She was uh, rafting on the uh, Colorado River. She wound up in Patagonia Magazine. I love that picture. Um, can you give me... You give me a second to touch up to you before you're flying. You're flying through them, buddy. <laughs> Again. This is the Kennedy slate. Um, I was three years old when this happened. Um, Jackie, John Jr. My mom was a, my mom was a big big Jackie O fan. I could do like a whole wall on Jackie O. <laughs> and here we have. Marvin Gaye and Diana Ross did a record together in about 73. I love that picture. This is Minnie Riverton. Loving you. That was her only hit song, but this was a great album she made right before she died. She died of breast cancer. Bruce was on the cover of Time and Newsweek when uh, Border and came out. Shut up, Dante. Grace and Annie. LaBelle again. Mr. Eddie Money. Pat Smith again. I was a big fan of roller derby growing up. Beatles, of course. And Laura Nero. This is Laura Nero. She was a great singer. Talk song. about the roller derby thing. Um, that's Charlie O'Connell. He was a San Francisco Bay Bomber. He was a big guy and he just beat everybody up. <laughs> I have some other roller derby in the back. This is from Cannery Rome. Bruce Harris was a good friend of mine. He was an artist. These are all the characters from Canary Row. And this is where it took place. That's Doc's lab right there. This is a portrait of Doc Ricketts. 
that is his lab right there. That's like I said, where the book takes place. This is how the lab looks from the rear. This is on the, the Monterey Bay. This is where he collected all his marine samples. That's our dog, Stacy. She lived to be about six years old out there. Three, four, five, six. Okay, that's the outdoors. So he's Bruce? Bruce Aris. Very well-known artist. His uh, house burned down in 88, and I went out and spent a year of my life helping him clear the way to build a new one. It's quite an experience. So these are some of the bands I worked with over the years. I worked at the 930 Club on the stage for many years. Where's that? In Washington, D.C. It's a great place. And I was, technically I worked on the stage, but I was really more like the host. I would love to cook for the bands and, you know, find weed if they need it or whatever. <laughs> Alanis Morissette. That was not an easy autograph to get. She was very particular. Loving Rockets. They are also in a band called Bauhaus. And they came around frequently. We got to be good friends. Cake was my favorite band of all time. They came up to me and they were like, do you remember us? I'd worked on a show with them in Florida years before. They're such, such nice guys. Southern Culture on the Skids I've been friends with for probably 30 years. They haven't been around here for a while, but... Um, Weren't they an Atlanta band? They're from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Plastic seat sweat. Then Green Day, of course, they scribbled out their, over their faces. That's a pretty good one. And uh, Dan Wilson, semi-sonic. We got to be good friends. He taught me how to string my guitar. <laughs> and Cowboy Junkies. Did a nice little show with them on uh, New Year's Eve one year. And here's some assorted live posters from, some from D.C., some from Atlanta. That Prince is priceless. That was from the Washington Times newspaper. I don't think anybody has one of those left. Which one is it? The Prince. And then um, these were Atlanta. Love Tractor was a great Atlanta band. The Ramones came through frequently in Raised Hill. Boingo Boingo was awesome. They were great. It's Danny Elfman who's the, who makes the music for The Simpsons. He's quite a guy. And Cindy Lauper, when she came out, boy, she sure was a big, big hit. Marion Faithful, she wound up playing at the 688 Club because it didn't sell very well, but she was an amazing performer. Men Without Hats, they were entertaining. The first band I ever seen without a drummer. I didn't really like that. It was all like electronic. It wasn't that great. And then Carl Wallinger had a band called Roll Party. He's quite a talented English guy. Then over here, this is kind of a neo, I love the Travolta and Billy Idol, like this happened to come out in the same year. Um, Richard Nixon, that's Jackie Gleason above, the Eurythmics. And that's actually John Berkowitz on the Daily News. It's a picture of him, it's, he's the son of Sam. And I think they happened, he was in court like the same day Elvis Presley died or something. And then Patty Hearst. Notorious Patty Hearst, Bob and Joan, and Ricky Lee Jones again. Man, Morning 40 Federation, they were awesome. They are awesome, they're local band. These are a couple that I made into tables. When I had a restaurant, this is Galactic, a local band. And Patty Smith did this little scripture for me. I've gotten to be good friends with her over the years. She got to meet Leroy a few years back. She was awesome. She is awesome. Wow. How'd you do that, lacquer? Yeah, it's called liquid glass. That's from 75. I went to see Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon with my bro two brothers in a 66 Impala. <laughs> I think it's a bootleg t-shirt, actually. But nonetheless, it's a, it's a great shirt. It's paper thin. It's over 40 years old. And then, I love all these bands. The Cranberries, that one's autographed too. Um, Dolores, she's awesome. Thompson Twins have a huge place in my heart, as do the B-52s. Human League, Blondie. And then the Bob Marley over there.
Here's the original songbook from Carole King's Tapestry, one of the largest selling records of all time. This is me, the first time I ever came to New Orleans in 1979. I had it done in Jackson Square. I was here for a realtor's convention. And then I just wound up coming back and back and back. You were wanting to be a realtor? I was a realtor. When I was eight, yep, in Arlington when I was 18. Uh, Bob Marley, up there. You know that story, huh? Women in Rock, that's a good one. These are some of my credentials from over the years. I worked on every presidential inauguration from Reagan to George Bush, George W. Bush. Worked on all the Lollapaloozas, the first three. Hold on just a second. So you were in the White House and stuff? No, when, you, when we have the inauguration, it's a, there's just parties everywhere, and they just send you around from party to party to, to help set up and tear down. There's all the different balls. I love her. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened to her. That's actually pretty recent. That's from about a year ago. That is from 1971. Raquel Welsh in Kansas City Bomber. And a lot of the skaters that I watch on TV were in it as extras. Terrible, terrible movie, but <laughs> great poster. <laughs> I would love to put it on display somewhere at a university or uh, just get it out of my house. Nobody ever comes to my house, you know. <laughs> There's no point to having it here. So if somebody out there wants to put it on display somewhere, let me know. I'm working on getting the whole thing framed. Nice. So that. Cheers. Tell me about you. Ah, I'm old, tired, disabled, <laughs> still a lot of fun, but uh, I don't know, what do I say? You were born and ate a lot of tacos. <laughs> Tippy's Taco House, Tippy's Taco House. I had my first taco in 66. Red bean. Red bean. I just am, I've been an unconventional person my whole life. I. You know, I hear people say, what are you going to do the rest of your life? I was like, uh, I did a lot of different things. Some successful, some not. <laughs> so how do you describe yourself? Uh, I don't know. You know me. You describe myself. <laughs> Stinky? I could use a shower. I live in a great neighborhood. I'm sort of the mouth of the south, the neighborhood watch. Kind of make sure everybody knows each other and pretty safe and there's no gas leaks or water leaks or anything like that. And, uh... <laughs> I don't know what to say. Give me your best Johnny Cash. <laughs> 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 and one, two, three. <laughs> That's a good way to end it, right? Cool.